Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today you got a little project we're working on, and this is uh, for my good friend, Andrew Alexander. It goes by Blacksmith Tools over on Instagram, and he kind of got me roped into doing this project a while back. And finally, I've got some castings to start working with this on. So what these are, these are some wheels that go on some kind of special vice cart that he is trying to restore and uh, he was able to get an original set and from that we were able to make some patterns and have some castings made to actually try to replicate uh, the originals. Now um, this is actually one of the original wheels. There's two wheels that go to a particular um, assembly and we're going to be working on the entire assembly eventually but right now what i want to work on are the wheels themselves there's three sets of these here so three sets of two a total of six wheels and uh, what i've got again is just the the castings these came from uh, clark easterling over at windy hill foundry he was able to actually uh, mold up the original wheels i think he's got some videos where he did this uh, a while back and uh, from that has the castings and now we got some machining that needs to be done to these. So in today's project, what my goal is, is I want to get um, the hub of these wheels. I need to face both the front and the back side of that, get it to the proper thickness. I need to have those face surfaces parallel to one another. Um, and which presents a little challenge and I've got a solution how we're going to do that. And we also need to drill the hole through here that of course will be, um, you know, on the axis with the wheel itself. So, uh, lathe work is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to start by, uh, chucking these up, getting them running as true as I can. This wheel is, um, you know, a casting, so it's probably not perfectly round. Uh, want to get it running as true as we can though. We're going to face off, uh, the one side, drill the hole in there, and then I'm gonna be making a fixture to mount these on that will allow me to face off the back side and keeping it running true to the hole that's in there, perpendicular to the hole that's in there, and be able to get these all to the same uh, thickness here to match the originals. And uh, that's gonna be what we're gonna be working on today. So let's get over here on the lathe, get started doing it. All right, I've got my, jaws on the chuck here turned out to the outside so that I'm gripping something on the outside diameter. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and we're just going to chuck this up like such and um, I'm just going to turn this on and look and see what kind of run out we've got. And looking at the outside diameter I think it's in pretty good shape. Now there's a little bit of wobbling going on this flange around the outside but uh, we can clean that up on the lathe. So let me uh, tell you what, let me I'll flip this around where I got my spokes right up underneath those teeth. Double check that again. Still looks good. And uh, I'm gonna come in here with a cutter. And I think I'm gonna start by just kind of on this rim, I just want to barely get that cleaned up where it's running kind of true. We're going to be making a measurement off of that. I'm not trying to take any more off of this than I have to. Maybe just a little bit more. I think that'll work. Zoom three. Now I'm gonna come in here and uh, start facing this hub on the inside.
Guys, I have measured on my originals the, from the outside flange of this to the hub, it's, it's inset a half inch, 500 thousandths of an inch. So what I've done is I've zeroed my digital readout on this measurement here, and we can come in here and face this, and I can just uh, read right off my digital readout until I get to 0 0.500 on the depth, and I know that I'm gone far enough. So that's how I'm measuring this. I kind of had to stop there and get all that worked out. But we're just gonna keep on going. Right now, I'm about uh, 315 thousandths in, so I've got about 200 thousandths to go. A little less than 200 thousandths. But uh, that's how we're gonna measure, just using the digital readout. I'm taking about 25 thousandths per pass here. And we're just gonna work our way down until we get that hub um, faced off where we want it. And I'm gonna dial in 500. Which is right there. This will be my last pass. All right. It's got that um, hub diameter right where I want it. Next, I need to drill a hole through there. Let me get that measured and figure out what we need, and we'll get that done. All right, we need to drill an 11 16 hole through there for a little axle to fit through. So uh, I'm just gonna come in here, start with a center drill, kind of just peck that center there enough to get a hole to start. That's all I need. It's an 11 16 inch drill, I'm just gonna do it all in one pass, I think. And there we go. Very good. So uh, this side is done. Uh, we'll come back and finish up the other side, get it to the right thickness, as well as true up this outside diameter in a later step. But right now, I've got five more of these to do. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all of that. I'll just get in here and get it done. Uh, but the first one's knocked out. Here are my six wheels down here. These are the two originals up top. We've got one side done. We've got this side faced off. It's a half inch in from the rim, which I just kind of touched on all these to clean up. And then we've got the uh, hole through there that will basically the ax will ride on. So what's next is we need to flip this over and get this side faced off to the proper thickness of this hub. Um, but most importantly, it has to be faced off perpendicular to that hole. And to do that, I'm going to make a little fixture to hold these. I can't just go slap these up into the chuck of the lathe like we did before, uh, because we may not get the hole perfectly, or this face here may not be perfectly aligned with the hole. This hole could be off a little bit because we don't have a machined surface to grip a hold of over here to uh, put into the lathe. So my game plan here is I'm going to use a piece of metal here. We will have a, a, a hub or a stub that comes up off of this that fits up over that hole. Uh, and then we will clamp the piece down to this face on, the, on a piece of metal here. And then that will basically align it and we'll put this in the lathe and turn it. Now the other challenge I got is I need to be able to uh, somehow fix that to this. I, don't, I won't be able to use a chuck. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I've got a, uh, just a piece of round stock here. Um, it fits nicely 
inside of this. So what I'm going to do is we're basically going to drill a hole in this. We'll have the arbor come up through that. I'll weld it in place. We'll machine everything, uh, you know, where it's running true and square and everything else. And then we'll slide it on there and I'll have a couple of holes drilled in here and I can just put a little some little clamps in here to clamp everything tight up against that back piece and drive it on the on the lathe. That's my game plan. So first step is we need to build this fixture. So uh, I'm going to start by um, boring out a hole in here that we can run this up through and um, get everything lined up like it needs to be. All right, let me uh, get busy. I'm going to start. I got my plate over here in the chuck and we're just going to drill a hole in there. I think I'm going to go with an inch and a quarter hole and that'll be for that arbor to come up through. Start by uh, just putting a center drill in here again uh, to just give me a little dimple to start my hole right there in the center of the part. Should be all we need right there. All right, let me change drill bits. Uh, I got a half inch drill bit here just to get a hole started. I'm gonna slow our work down here to put this larger hole. I just got an inch and a quarter drill bit. And we'll just run that through there. So here's what I need to do. I need to turn down an, this area here to inch and a quarter. It's an inch and a half right now. I need to turn it down one inch. We're gonna make a little shoulder down here and that's what that uh, um, plate will slide up on and we'll weld it in place. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this alone right now. We'll worry about that once we get everything else done. So uh, let me get my speed back up. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna touch off on that face. And I'm gonna zero my digital readout. And that way I can know I'm traveling in one inch. And all right, we're gonna turn an inch off there. Take it into one inch. Right there. You get a diameter on this, and I'll put that in my digital readout. One inch four twelve. One point four one one two. And we need to take that down to one inch two five oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fuzz just a tad bit off of that. Take a little bitty bit out. There we go. Very good. All right. My, um, we'll turn this down for that 
same diameter as the shaft. I'm gonna wait and do that after I get everything welded up so nothing moves. We do all our turning to size at the end, but that'll go down. And I'm gonna drill three holes in this plate where I can put a screw to just pull that tight. But uh, you can kind of see what we're going after. So let me get my three holes drilled, get this welded in place, and we'll finish this uh, fixture up. So I just came over here and just kind of eyeballed where I wanted my holes to be. There's nothing precision about it, uh, but I laid it on there to get everything laid out. And I got three dots, and uh, we're gonna go drill and tap that, probably three eighths, uh, where we can just uh, put a cap screw in there to, with a little clamp to hold it in place. All right, I'll get that knocked out. So guys, I went ahead and drilled the, and tapped the three mounting holes in there and also went ahead and put this onto the, the arbor that we turned and welded it in place. And it's welded on the backside, just kind of tacked in place enough to hold it. And that is gonna give us a nice little fixture here. Once we do a little more sheening, again, we'll slide the up on this hub. I need to turn that to length or diameter rather, uh, cut it off to length and we will, it'll, the flat surface of the hub will mount against this flat surface here and then we'll clamp it down with some clamps in those holes to kind of hold it in place uh, to finish the machining. So what I want to do next is uh, turn this to the diameter that we need. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and just face this. Probably really doesn't need it because we're not going to be up against it, but I think it's we're just gonna do it anyway. I think it'll just make it look a little bit better when it's running, if nothing else. And if it does uh, go up and touch it, we won't have any run out in it. So let's get that going. Uh, I need to remeasure my hub size. I can't remember, I think it's five eighths, but let me double check that. All right, this needs to be 11 sixteenths, which is uh, 600 and uh, 875. 6875 is what we're going for. We are currently at about 760. So let's go ahead and get that turned down. Just take a little bit off of it, get a good measurement, and we'll go from there. We're about 715. I'll put that in my digital readout. and face this as well. Just real lightly hit it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, turn this outside edge a little bit too. True it up. Not really necessary, but uh, make it look a little nicer. Right these corners, a little chamfer on them. The back side as well. Go ahead and break this one while we're in here.
Well, I had a little uh, challenge, and I thought I'd share this with you because, uh, anyway, it's just how do you do something? I needed to measure the thickness of this hub. I thought, no problem at all. I got just a tool for that. I have one of a fancy hub micrometer. You just slip it up into the hub and you measure it. I went and got my hub micrometer. Doesn't fit. Hmm. Okay, so plan B. I've got a deep throat micrometer. And okay, this will slip over here. But guess what? I can't get it to line up. It's too high. No matter which way I went in there, I couldn't get a I could get it to go across, but I couldn't get it to go across squarely to get a good measurement. So, okay. Playing B down. So now I'm over here at the surface plate and I'm gonna lay that down flat on the plate and I've just got a depth micrometer and we'll come in here and measure the depth. And that's measuring about 950 thousandths. And yeah, same thing there. So they're both about 950 thousandths. So we're just gonna go with that on the, the thickness of the parts. So I'm back over here on my little fixture. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here. I guess this is the cutter. We're gonna be facing the other side of that hub off with, and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna just touch it off on the back side. And because we're gonna be facing, cutting on the same side of that cutter, I can use my digital readout to measure this with. So I'm just gonna zero um, the Z axis here. And then I can just measure that out. I'm gonna come out 0 0.9375, which is one, two, right here, that's 9375. That will be the thickness of the hub. And I'm going to zero that again. And now when I'm facing this, I can just be watching my digital readout dial into zero. When I get to zero, everything should be good. So let's get our first uh, uh, wheel in here to turn. I've got my clamps made. And we'll slide that up on there. I will note that I was thinking that the thickness of the hub was half inch. I should have measured it first. It'd be nicer if that was a little bit longer, but it's not gonna matter. I'm really registering more off of the, the flat face back here, but we're gonna slide that on there. Now, these are my clamps. I just It's just real simple. I just got a piece of metal with a hole in it, and we'll come in here and we're just gonna clamp it down. And we'll go around, I got three of these. Uh, evenly spaced around so that I can uh, apply even pressure and get that piece uh, clamped down nice and flat by there in the back. Okay, and then we will just use a Allen wrench here. Get this tightened down where it's right there on that back of that flange will be tightened up and I can actually look down in here and let me loosen my lathe up a little bit. I can turn it. I can make sure that I've got a, no gap in there, which I don't. We'll just tighten all these up. All right, so now our part is running true to the hub. It's running square to the other side. So when I face this, those will be parallel. And it's also because it's running true to the hub, I can lightly hit this outside diameter to true these up since that is a rough casting. Don't want to take much off of them, uh, just enough to kind of just make sure they're going to roll pretty good. So we will come in here, we'll face this off, and then we will get a good uh, outside diameter, and I think we'll have these knocked out. All right, here we go. We'll start by facing these. Come in there and touch off. And like I said, I'm just gonna be going to zero on the digital readout. is right there. Okay. Now we'll come out, go to the outside diameter. And uh, I'm going to slow that down a little bit because of that larger diameter. We got to 
a lot faster RPM going on there. And I'm gonna touch off. And we'll feed across that. Take a couple of light passes until we get it kind of trued up. It's gonna take a few minutes because of the slower speed, but as you increase the diameter, the surface speed of that surface uh, increases dramatically. And I don't wanna burn a cutter up here, so. We'll just take our time and get it knocked out. I'm not trying to turn these wheels to be perfectly round, but I do want to have them a, a nice um, round, you know, where there's not any gap in there or, you know, big places running out. And I want them to all be about the same size. So I'm just going to see where we're at. You know, we're going to be going into five, five, seventy-five, five and three quarters. That's what we're going to aim for on all of them. And I'm just going to zero that out on the digital readout. And we'll take one more pass there. And hopefully they'll all clean up around that same value. It would have been nice if when uh, we cast these, if we'd had a real pattern, they could have been a little bit oversized and we'd had more material to machine off. But because they use the original wheels as the pattern and you got some shrink involved, uh, you know, we're just kind of having to make the best do we can. And I don't want to take off more than is absolutely necessary on these. Uh, you get them where they'll run through. All right, that one is done. We will uh, take that one off, put the next one on, and uh, I got five more to do. I'll do those off camera. And there we go. We got them all finished up. We got our inside turned half inch in from the outside rim. And we did true that up just a little bit because that's going to be rubbing up against, uh, or not rubbing, but it'll be running up against an inside part. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any run out on the inside of that wheel. On the outside, it's not as important, so I didn't even bother doing them. And they actually all were running fairly true um, the way they were. This side, of course, we faced it off, got the hub to the proper thickness, got our hole drilled in there, and we got our Outside diameters all turn to the same diameter so that these uh, will all match one another and all be exactly the same. So uh, mission accomplished. Uh, part one of this project knocked out. Now I've still got to do some uh, machining, do some more castings to the part that these mount to. Uh, we'll be working on that in some upcoming video or videos down the road, uh, but uh, part one done. Well, there you go, guys. That is going to be a wrap. Uh, we got these wheels knocked out. Had to make a little bit of a fixture over there to get it done, but you know, that's just part of it. Sometimes work holding can be the most challenging part of working on something in a machine shop. And you just have to think about what can I do to hold this part to get it to what I do what I need to do. And often that involves making a little fixture. In this case, it was all scrap material that was laying around, uh, hardly any cost, just a little bit of time, but really, uh, made us, let us be able to get it done easily. And uh, even in a kind of a small production setting like this, uh, six parts, not a huge production job, but you know, once I got it set up on the first one, got all those zeros set, I could just go in there and dial right to everything. Didn't even have to make measurements. So it just was, uh, it's easy. So there you go. Well, guys, uh, that will be it. As always, thank you so much uh, for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And uh, with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video.